So today I'm going to demonstrate how to do a squat pivot transfer. So here's our patient case. Our patient is a 84 year old woman with stage 4 renal cancer. She's been bedridden for two weeks and she presents with a 4 out of 5 upper extremity strength and a 3 out of 5 lower extremity strength. So our job is to get this patient up from supine to sitting in a wheelchair. So before I demonstrate the transfer, I'm first going to talk about what information you can get just from the patient case. So before you've even observed the patient at all, this is some information that can be important. So first off, this patient is showing marked weakness, largely because she has been bedridden for two weeks, which definitely comes with a lot of consequences, but she still has maintained pretty good upper extremity strength. So with this information, I know that there will be some things that she will be able to do independently or with minimal assistance, just because her upper extremities are relatively intact. She has a 4 out of 5, but she has a 3 out of 5 for her lower extremity. So that means that she probably will require um, a decent amount of assistance when bearing weight. So that's part of why we chose the squat pivot. And on top of this, given her age and the fact that she's been bedridden so long, it is very possible that she will have a hard time maintaining sitting balance. And at this point, because of the marked weakness and because of where she's at with her treatment, um, the program will largely consist of bed mobility tasks. So educating her on how to get in and out of bed safely and effectively. The first principle of transferring a patient is to make sure that they are safe as well as you are safe when performing the transfer. This involves things like properly setting up your environment, guarding the patient effectively, use of a gait belt, as well as making sure that the patient is wearing non-slip footwear. So socks and slippers which don't have good friction may not be the best when you're transferring a patient. The second principle of transfers is to maximize independence. In other words, you want the patient to do as much as physically possible while maintaining their safety. Now this is where your critical thinking comes into play. A lot of this is dictated by what they can do in your readiness to move assessment, which I'll talk about later. And a good rule of thumb is you want the patient to exert their maximal effort and you want to assist them as little as possible while maintaining their safety. The third principle of transfers is communication. Because when you transfer a patient, you want to effectively move as a unit, it's extremely important that you communicate to your patient what you are going to do what they are going to do, and also make sure that you guys are timed correctly. So it's important to let your patient know, for example, on the count of three, we are going to do X. Also, make sure that they understand your directions and are able to repeat it back to you. This all depends on their mental acuity and their ability to understand instructions. Step one of transferring a patient is to set up the environment. This is of utmost importance because a lot of mistakes that are made during the transfer process could have been solved by simply properly setting up the environment. Okay, so here are the steps for setting up the environment. So step one, you want to clear any obstacles away from the area that you're going to be transferring the patient. 
and this makes sense obviously if there's a bunch of stuff on the floor you don't want them to trip on them or you could trip and if you trip you're all going down so make sure that's nice and clear and then you need to set up the wheelchair so you want to position it close to where the patient is going to end up sitting once you get them sitting up and at a 45 degree angle to the bed then you want to remove the footrests because those will get in the way of the transfer and then you also want to remove the armrests closest to the bed so you leave the other one on that way they can reach for it and grab onto it when doing the squat pivot transfer if we were doing a stand pivot transfer we would leave both armrests on and then you just lock the brakes because you don't want the wheelchair to roll away once you put them into it and it's more stable obviously if the brakes are locked then you want to get your gait belt I would suggest just having it on you if you wear the gait belt you're never gonna forget to put the gait belt on the patient and it's definitely a huge safety issue on top of that you want to make sure that the patient has non-slip footwear within reach so if they have shoes find them position them close to where you're able to get them on the patient safely before transferring them and lastly you need to lower the bed to about the height of the wheelchair you don't want to be transferring them from a lower surface to a higher up surface Once you've set up the environment, you're ready to do your readiness to move assessment. So first thing you want to do is make sure that your patient is cognitively aware. If your patient isn't alert and oriented times three, or if they're alert and oriented times one or times two, it's possible that you may have to either modify the way that you instruct them or if they're not alert and oriented at all it's most likely unsafe to do this kind of transfer because it's unlikely that the patient will be able to participate whatsoever so to test their cognition you need to make sure they're alert and oriented times three which means they're aware of person time and place so you can ask them their name you can ask them their last name Sometimes it can be a little bit uncomfortable to just be outright, like, do you know your name? So you could say, when you introduce yourself, hi, my name is such and such, and you are, and then you'll be right there and you'll get your answer. Then you have to ask them if they know where they are, most likely hospital, blah, blah, blah. Then you have to ask them if they're aware of time. So you can either ask them, do you know what day it is? Do you know the date today? Do you know who our president is? Stuff like that. Once you're done with that and you've confirmed that your patient is cognitively aware, you're ready to do your mobility and strength portion of the readiness to move assessment. So this is where you are able to determine what your patient is able to do independently because like I said previously the goal with this patient especially is to maximize her independence with bed mobility so the information that you receive from your readiness to move assessment in supine is super important because that's largely all this patient is going to be able to do you know it's again it's likely that this person will require a lot of support when actually performing the transfer but for now we're focusing on maximizing independence just in bed mobility so the first thing you do is you ask the patient if they can bend their head forward touch their chin to their chest and then see if they can look to both sides after that you ask them if they can raise their arms overhead shoulder flexion and then you ask them if they can raise their arms straight out to the side shoulder abduction you can say can you make a snow angel for me it's an easy way to cue them 
then you want to see if the patient is able to bring themselves up on their elbows, as in flexing their trunk and able to hold themselves up on their elbows. Then, if they can do that, see if they can go all the way up to long sitting, basically sitting up, propped up on their hands. Then you move to the lower extremity, you see if they can point their toes down, bring them back to their head, ankle plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. You see if they can flex their hips, knee to chest, both legs. Then you want to test their knee flexion, so ask them to bend their knees. And then this is a good transition into seeing if they can bridge. So bridging is especially important for bed mobility because it'll tell you how well they're going to be able to move from supine to sideline because if they can get their hips up and they're able to reach over and grab the bar it's likely that they're able to at least go into sideline independently. After that you see if they can bridge up and then shift their hips side to side and if they can do this then it'll be even easier to move from supine to sideline. Now I'm just going to briefly talk about the benefits of the hook lying position. So hook lying position is when your knees are flexed to around 60 degrees, your feet are flat on the table or the bed, and because of this you are bearing some weight through your feet. So this may be contraindicated for people with weight bearing restrictions like if they're non weight bearing or even toe touch weight bearing. but um, that's ultimately up to you to um, decide whether or not it's safe. Their spine will be in a neutral position, so maintaining those natural curves. And mobility-wise, it involves hip flexion, knee flexion, as well as a small amount of plantar flexion. And the main benefit of the hook lying position is that it provides your patient with a large base of support and it lowers their center of mass. So this provides stability in their trunk and in their hips, and it also promotes dynamic postural control of their trunk and lower extremities. Once you have your patient sitting at the edge of the bed, you're ready to do your readiness to move assessment in the seated position. So first thing you'll do is assess their sitting balance. So since this person has been off their feet for a while, they've been bedridden, it is highly likely that they will have a little bit of trouble uh, maintaining their sitting balance. So with these people, you want to make sure that you guard them very closely and check to see where their balance is at. Then you're going to do some manual muscle testing. You're going to test shoulder flexion and abduction strength, hip flexion strength, and then knee extension strength. And then you're going to ask them if they can press up and raise their hips off of the bed with their hands. And this will let you know whether they're able to scoot towards the chair or wherever you're transferring them to. When you transfer a patient with significant lower extremity weakness, what you're going to need to do is what's called blocking the knees. So when someone performs a independent transfer, they're able to use their extensors to counteract the force, the flexion force of gravity that, if they were weak, would cause their tibias to fall forward. And with these people who have been bedridden for a while, this is highly likely. And we know that this individual has um, not so great lower extremity strength. So what you're going to need to do is counteract that force with your knees. So with this individual, we're going to have to block both knees. So what you're going to have to do is position your legs in a way that if their legs start to give out, you're able to apply a force to basically straighten out their legs. All right. So you're going to want the insides of your knees to be situated around the outside of both of their knees so that if you need to and that they start collapsing forward you can apply a force that will keep them upright and keep them safe. Hi. Oh.
Hello. I'm Noah. Hi, Noah. I'm going to be your PT. Oh, great. Great. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to get you up sitting at the edge of the bed, and then I'm going to help transfer you into that wheelchair so we can take you down to the gym. I'd love to do that. Okay. Yeah, I've been stuck in here a while. I know. It's been, it's been hard. So, first, I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, and we're going to see what you can do on your own because the goal here is for you to do as much as you can independently, okay? All right. So I'm gonna be here to make sure you're safe. I'm gonna put this gate belt on you once we're up and sitting. But okay. as much as you can, I want you to do it on your own, okay? Yep, I'm, I'm gonna do my best because I wanna get out of here. I agree. So before we get started, could you, um, could you just tell me your first name? Peggy. Okay. And Peggy, do you know where you are today? Yes. I am uh, at this rehab center that looks a lot like my home. It does, yes. Yes, we did that intentionally. <laughs> so, do you know what date it is? Yes, it's uh, January 2nd, 2019. Beautiful. Yep, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Alright, so I'm just going to see what you can do mobility-wise, okay. and then we'll try and get you up into sitting, okay? Great. So, can you raise your arms straight overhead, just like that? Like okay. this? Yep. Okay. Now, can you go straight out to the side, like you're making a snow angel? Here, start at your hips and just go straight out. Don't hit the bookcase. Yep, okay. I can do that. That feels good. Okay. Can you touch your chin to your chest? Now, can you turn to your left and turn to your right? That's feeling a little stiff, but I can do it. Okay. Stiff? Is it painful or just um, feels... Haven't done that in a while? I just haven't done it in a while, yeah. Okay. All right. Can you point your toes down to the floor? Now uh, back towards your head? Yeah, a little crack in my head. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Can you bring yourself up on your elbows? Kind of prop yourself up in bed. There we go. Now, can you bring yourself up on your hands? Uh, on one side, kind of, but not all the okay, way up. Okay, that's all right. You can sit back down. I can lay back down? Yep, yep. Oh, okay, thanks. Now, are you able to bring your knee to your chest? Do Which the right one first. doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. Up. Oh. Now you can relax. That feels good. It's a nice stretch, right? Yeah. Now, we'll try the left. teach yoga too? I do not. Maybe someday. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would be nice. Yeah. Now, can you just bend your knees and have your feet flat on the table? So just bring them up like this. Yep. You can do the other one too. Okay. Now, can you lift your hips and your lower back off the table? So just press through your feet. Mm -hmm. Maybe bring them back a little bit. Oh, yeah, I think I need to yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh, like that? There we go. Good. Excellent. Oh. All right, you can relax. Whew. Okay, so now basically that's the most I've worked out lately. It's a lot, right? Uh, yeah. Uh. So, hey Peggy. Yeah. So now we're gonna get you into sideline. So All right. basically, what I want you to do is reach with this arm mm -hmm. over to this railing. All right. Okay. And basically, your legs are already crossed, so that's good. Okay. So I'm just gonna help you roll to the side. All right. Okay. Am I rolling like my legs all the way down? Um, they're gonna be hanging towards the edge, but that's the next step. I'm gonna oh, bring okay. your your legs over the to the side all so right. that you can use that as a counterweight to get you Great. up into sitting. Because okay. I was just I didn't want to go too fast. I was a little nervous we'll, about getting uh, dizzy. We'll go at your speed, okay? If okay. you feel uncomfortable, we can always lay you back down. All right. All right. Yep. So right. on the count of three, uh -huh. we're gonna roll to the side. Now remember, I want you using as much of this upper body strength as you can, okay? Mm -hmm. all, right? all right? So I'm going to help you, and I'll be here to keep you safe, but I want you to do most of the work, all right? All right. So on the count of three, we'll go up, or we'll um, roll to sideline, okay? okay. Yep. All right? All right. One, two, three. All righty. All right. You feel okay? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to swing your arm, or your legs down here, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So now I want you to press up with this arm, Okay, and on okay. the count of three, 
I want you to push yourself up, and your legs will act as a counterweight, and mm -hmm. we're just going to go up into sitting, okay? Okay. All right. Yes. Are you ready? I think so, yeah. All right. So I'm here to help you, but again, I want you to do as much as you can, okay? Uh, yes. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I did it. Excellent. Oh, I'm not dizzy at all. Good. Well, I'm Good. glad you're holding on to me, though. I was nervous about that. It's okay. Look, you can always do more than you expect, right? Yeah. It's a crazy looking belt. I know, it's fancy, right? So what is this belt for? It's just exactly. so I can hold on to you. You know, we put oh, it right okay. around your uh, your midsection here. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a little tight, but it'll loosen up once we get you into standing. Okay? All right. I have never had this before. Really? Yes. It reminds me of a, a yoga belt for like stretching, stretching your thighs. It's somewhat similar. Just so I can get a good hold on you, make sure you're safe while we do right. this transfer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Before we go any further. I'm gonna test your sitting balance, okay? So, scoot to the edge here so we can have your feet on the floor. Oh. Okay. And before we do that, we'll just pop your shoes on. Oh, okay. Can you tie them for me? Yeah, absolutely. Can you feel like the ear of my feet? Before I do that, let me just assess your balance real quick. Make sure you feel okay. all right. Okay. Yeah. Sitting here by yourself. Yeah, okay? I, feel, I think I feel fine. So I'm just gonna give you little taps. All right. Mm -hmm. Try and not let me move you too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. You all right? Yeah. Ready? That's pretty good. All right. So I'll tie your shoes. Okay. Seems like you got pretty good balance, which is good news. Good to be sitting up, actually. I know. You get some blood flowing. Yep. Using those muscles again. Yeah. All right. All right, Peggy. I just have a couple more tests for you. All right. All right. Can you bring your right arm straight ahead, straight up like this? Like how high? That's good. All right. Now I want you to not let me move you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Hold. Oh. Hold. Oh. Oh my gosh. Right. You gotta get That's me to the gym. It's okay. <laughs> oh. Try this one. Up to about 90 this degrees. one's a little stronger, I think. All right, hold, hold. Oh. It's okay. All right, let's try the same arm straight out to the side. Okay. Like this. Yep. Don't let me move you. Okay. Hold. <laughs> oh, that's harder. That's all right. It's a good effort. All right. Oh, this hurts just to hold up. <laughs> hold. I'm sorry. All right, that's fine. Can you lift one of your knees towards the sky? Um. Try this one. Perfect. Okay. And don't let me move you, okay? Okay. Hold, hold, hold. All right. That was nice. a little better, huh? Yeah. Now try this one. Okay. Lift it up. <clears throat> now don't let me move you. Mm -hmm. Hold, hold, hold. Okay. Good. Oh, my stomach growled a little bit there. Sorry. That's all right. Now, can you kick this leg out? Oh, easy. Oh, <laughs> Nice and slow. Are oh, you not going for speed? Here? Nope. Okay. That was impressive, though. <laughs> All right, oh, I see. Don't You're doing me, more pushing. Don't, okay. don't let me bend your knee, okay? Okay. Hold. Okay. Hold. Hold. Okay. Hold. All right. And try the next one. Nice. Nice and slow. All right. Don't let me move you, okay? All right. Hold. 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 Oh. Hold. You're getting stronger. <laughs> Can you, um, are you able to press yourself up and lift your butt off the table? Try that. So push through your arms. Press up. That's all right. That's a little me. tough. <laughs> I will help you. Okay. I will help you. All right. So now I'm just going to show you what we're going to do for the transfer. Okay. All right, Peggy. Okay. So real quick. Yeah. I'm going to show you what we're going to do or what you're going to do rather. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have you repeat my instructions back and then. We're going to do it, all right? Yeah. Just remember the rule. I want you doing as much as you can, okay? All right, yep. So you're going to be sitting here, right where I am, mm -hmm. and I want your feet flat on the floor, mm -hmm. okay? With your knees bent as much as possible, okay? So you can have this right foot a little bit more forward towards the chair, mm -hmm. okay? And basically all we're going to do 
So we're going to reach over here, mm -hmm. grab this bar, and then we're just going to go up. We're not going to stand all the way up, oh. and we're just going to sit down. All right? Okay. So yep. it's up, pivot, and then sit down. All right. Okay? Yep. And I'm going to be right in front of you so you're not going anywhere. That's the part I was going to ask about. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. do you mind repeating those instructions no, back know, to me real you, quick? And you know what? I'm a teacher, and that's one of the things we always ask our students to do, and it really is effective. All right, so um, you want me to sit closer to the wheelchair. Yeah, let's scooch over right now. To do yeah. it now? Okay. Yeah. So, go. Mm. Very good. All right. And All right. my feet should be on the floor with my right foot a little bit like uh, ahead, yep. like this, and close to the wheelchair. Yep. And my knees bent as much as possible. Right, you're already leaning forward. That's perfect. Oh, good. Okay, and then I have to reach over for this. This side rail thing right yep. here. If it's too tough for you to reach that far, uh -huh. you don't have to, but I think you can do I it. I can do it. My arms are pretty long. Okay. All right. All right. And then I think I just lift up, and I don't even have to stand all the way, do a little pivot. and It's just, all one fluid movement. And right. just get mostly on that chair. You want to make sure that the back of your legs are touching this chair, okay? And you're pretty yep. much right there. If you get up, you mm -hmm. pivot. You should be in a good position. All right. All right. We can always scooch and, me over later. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. And we're we're using this as our guide point. So right. you're pivoting towards this. And it's not going to move anywhere, right? Nope. Okay. The brakes are locked. Okay. We'll just double check. Oh, good. Brakes all right. are all locked. Yep. This uh, armrest is up, so I'll get that back on once we're ready to wheel right. you out. Great. Right. Great. And are you going to wheel me out to the gym, or do I have to push myself? I think I can wheel you out. All right. <laughs> You've done enough work for today. <laughs> all, right, all right, great. So I'm going to be right here. All right. Okay, and we're going to move as a unit. Okay? All right. Are you going to count for me? Yep, we're oh, going to go great. on the count of three, okay? All right, yes. Ready? Yes. One, two, three. Oh, oh easy. Look at that. <laughs> Good work. There we go. All right, all right, I'm ready to work out now. So, we'll get this back on. Okay, thank you. Do I have to wear this belt though? I, I, no, I can I take that like, off, yeah. It doesn't make my sweater look good. That's alright, I know. It's very unbecoming. Oh. Are there right. any other people wearing the belt? I mean, I will all do it. You won't be the only person with a belt, all I right. promise. Thank you. Right. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Right.